Good afternoon and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. Please stand and join in number 806, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 806. Love divine, all love's excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us your humble dwelling, all your faithful mercies crown. Jesus, source of all compassion, love unbounded, love all pure, visit us with your salvation. Let your love in us endure. Good afternoon. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today, as a church in the United States, we celebrate the memorial of St. John Newman, the first American bishop to be canonized a saint, as a bishop of Philadelphia, and a bishop who had a great love for the poor and the needy. As we celebrate then this memorial in his honor, let us call to mind our sins, especially for those times when we have failed to love one another as God loves us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who called the bishop St. John Newman, renowned for his charity and pastoral service, to shepherd your people in America, grant by his intercession that as we foster the Christian education of youth and are strengthened by the witness of brotherly love, we may constantly increase the family of your church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet we love one another. God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us that he has given us of his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testify that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. 
we have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. In this is love brought to perfection among us, that we have confidence on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. And so, one who fears it is not yet perfect in love. The word of the Lord. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment, endow the king, and with your justice, the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. The kings of Tarshish and Isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Gospel according to Mark. After the five thousand had eaten and were satisfied, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and proceed him to the other side toward Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And when he had taken leave of them, he went off to the mountain to pray. When it was evening, the boat was far out on the sea, and he was alone on shore. Then he saw that they were tossed about while rowing, for the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. They had all seen him and were terrified, but at once he spoke with them. Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. He got into the boat with them and the wind died down. They were completely astounded. They had not yet understood the incident of the loaves. On the contrary, their hearts were hardened. 
the gospel of the Lord. As we hear the words of Jesus, the gospel just proclaimed, I believe that last sentence is so important for us to hear with our hearts today. On the contrary, their hearts were hardened. The hearts of the disciples were hardened. And it was due to their hardened hearts that fear overcame them as they were being tossed about on that lake in a boat. Their hearts were frightened as they saw Jesus walking on the water. Their hardened hearts did not allow them to recognize the presence of Jesus, the loving Savior, the Son of God, present in their lives at a moment when they needed him most. That is why it is important for us during this Christmas season to continue to hear those words that assure us that God loves us and that we are called to love one another. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. It's that love of God that softens our hearts. And as our hearts are softened, then we recognize the presence of Jesus always in our midst. And now more than ever, as we continue to endure the cross of the pandemic, it's important for each and every one of us to hear those words, words, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And I would invite each and every one of us today, perhaps after Mass, to come forward to the nativity scene that is still here in our sanctuary. Or perhaps when you get home and if you still have your nat nativity scene, displayed, to spend a few moments gazing upon that infant Jesus laying there in the manger, because it's that infant Jesus, the Son of God that was sent to each and every one of us as a reminder of how much we are loved by God. God is love. Jesus is love. We are love because we have been created in the image and likeness of God. And so before the infant Jesus, we ask that God will continue to soften our hearts, to soften our hearts in the person of his son Jesus, so that just as Jesus brought peace and love and justice to the world, so each and every one of us may do the same in our lives through the love of God, the Spirit of God that is truly rooted in the depths of our hearts. Please stand. Entrusting ourselves to the care of the Father and the intercession of Jesus, we offer these prayers. That the church may be perfected in love and in union with our tribune to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may took graciously upon the needs of all nations and peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that all who live in fear may be upheld and strengthened by Christ's exhortation to be not afraid. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community of faith may be guided in all we say and do by the commandment to love one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may through the mercy of God rest in eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For the repose of the soul of Teresita Tan, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, look with favor on the prayers of your people and answer them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I now invite you to come forward and to place your gifts of gratitude in the baskets that are around the sanctuary of the Lord. And I thank you for your generosity and for the sacrifices you make this day. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Merciful Father, look upon the gifts we have placed on your altar and grant that we may reflect the image of Christ, your Son, just as you granted to St. John Newman to imitate what he celebrated. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, Though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call strain humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. 
in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and proclaim your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 815, Ubi Caritas, number 815. Caritas est vera, est vera, Deus ibi est, Deus ibi est. The love of Christ joins us together, let us rejoice in Him. And in our love and care for all, now love God in return. Ubi caritas est vera, est vera, Deus ibi est, Deus ibi est. In true communion let us gather, may all division cease, and in their place be Christ the Lord, our risen Prince of Peace. Ubi caritas est vera, Est vera, Deus ibi est, Deus ibi est. May we who gather at this table to share the bread of life become a sacrament of love. Your healing touch, O Christ. Ubi caritas est vera, est vera, Deus ibi est, Deus ibi est.
Let us pray. Refreshed by our participation in the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, we ask, O Lord, that by the example of St. John Newman, we may experience the power of this sacrament and remain constantly in the church by the bond of unity and truth. Through Christ our Lord, amen. At this time, we extend a special welcome to all who are visiting the cathedral today for the very first time. So I invite you, if, if this is your first visit to the cathedral, to raise your hand high so we can extend a special welcome to you. So welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. And if you did park in the cathedral parking structure, you may obtain a 90-minute parking validation from one of the security officers in the South Ambulatory here of the cathedral. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you this day and always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in one another. And have a good afternoon. Please join in number 783, We Walk by Faith. Number 783. We walk by faith and not by sight, no gracious words we hear from him who spoke as none e'er spoke, but we believe him near. 